This webinar will cover copy number variation detection using targeted sequencing data with NextGene version 231. I'm John McGuigan, and I'm a biologist at Soft Genetics. The CNV tool is new to NextGene in version 231. It works on a case control comparison between two samples, and those samples can be any NextGene alignment projects. There's no special processing needed ahead of time. The more similar those projects are in terms of experimental conditions, the better, in order to reduce the amount of variance that can occur. This tool is especially easy to use with targeted sequencing data using bed files that specify the amplicon locations. For more detailed information on how the CNV tool works, you can read the app note that has the same name as this webinar. In this analysis, I have four different samples, each with two or three replicates, and I also have a normal control uh, sample. So first, I'm going to open the CNV tool from the NextGene Viewer Tools menu. I'm going to load uh, my sample replicates one at a time and compare against that control. And each uh, AmpliSeq file here is actually a NextGene alignment project uh, that has already been run. And I ran all of them with the same settings. So after loading the sample and the control, you can select how you want to define your regions. And you can do that using the built-in annotation or looking at incremental segment length or, and this is what we recommend, loading a bed file that lists the positions of each amplicon. That way, each amplicon is essentially a data point in this comparison. Our normalization method works. Uh, it performs a global normalization uh, using uh, the coverage at likely true heterozygous SNP positions and performs that global normalization based on the median uh, coverage in each project at those positions. It then looks at each region and generates a log two ratio and a z-score. If the coverage in at least one project, uh, if the coverage in both projects are below a certain level, uh, then the calculations will not be performed uh, because they're considered unreliable. Uh, however, you can still show these regions in order to get a more consistent report that lists all of the regions uh, in your bed file. And if, in that case, if they both fall below this threshold, we just won't calculate a ratio. If you're looking for specific individual positions, it could be useful to filter based on the log two ratio or the z-score. But again, if you just want to get an overall picture uh, and have a consistent report listing one row in the report for each row in your bed file, so for each amplicon, you can turn off these filters. So that's what I'll do. Uh, and I'll generate one of these for each uh, sample, one of these comparisons, and save the report. Generating the report in this case took about 60 seconds. So now I can save the report to a tab delimited text file, which is very easy to open up in other software and do some processing outside of NextGene. In this case, I loaded the data and processed it using a Python script. What I did was I have four different samples, each with two or three replicates, and all of these were compared to the normal sample uh, that I showed earlier. And so I have log two ratios for each of these samples and each of the replicates in each sample. I averaged the log two ratio for each amplicon uh, between each replicate in a sample to get one value per amplicon per sample. I discarded any amplicons that did not have a log two ratio calculated uh, for any of the replicates in any sample, uh, which would happen if one of the, if that project had coverage below the cutoff threshold or if the normal sample had cut off, had coverage below the cutoff threshold. And so what we get is this nice, clear result. And I also smoothed out the data uh, using a rolling average of 10 amplicons. 
So this is chromosome 21 amplicons. And you can see there are about 55 amplicons left after all that processing. And the average of the trisomy replicates was around the expected ratio of about 0.6. And that ratio indicates a 50% increase in coverage uh, on a log 2 scale. Whereas the non-trisomy samples uh, were all pretty much close to a ratio of 0, indicating that they had the same uh, level of coverage as the uh, control sample. Here we can see the results for chromosome X. And the control sample that all of these replicates were compared to was a female sample. So anything with a ratio near zero would be an XX genotype. A ratio near negative one would be an X genotype. And a ratio near one would be a, a 4X genotype. So what we can see is the XXY genotype sample, uh, as expected, has a ratio near zero. The male uh, XY sample has a ratio uh, near negative 1, since there's only one X chromosome. The 4X sample has a ratio near 1, because there's four times the coverage, uh, uh, sorry, two times the coverage of the control sample uh, for the X chromosome. And this XO genotype appears to have a uh, deletion in the first uh, portion of the X chromosome and a normal uh, XX uh, coverage in the second part of the chromosome. And you can also see that there are about 10 times the number of amplicons uh, on the X chromosome as there were on chromosome 21. And here as sort of a control uh, is a normal chromosome that we don't expect to see any very large chromosomal abnormalities like we expected for chromosome X and chromosome 21. Uh, so you can see that the majority of amplicons on this chromosome are uh, at a ratio of around zero. However, there are some cases, uh, for instance, in this sample four, uh, where it looks like there could be a deletion uh, since we get a ratio very close to negative one. So this sort of graphing and handling of replicates uh, will be included in a future version of NextGene. But as I said, for now, it's very easy to load the log two ratios from the saved uh, text files. You can visit us, visit us on the web at our website, softgenetics.com. Uh, on the website, we have many more webinars available in the analysis corner link. And we also have many application notes where you can find specifics about particular topics. For more information on NextGene, you can contact info at softgenetics.com.